For some, they are extraordinary pieces of technology and the answer to our energy needs. For others, they are a blot on the landscape and a threat to biodiversity. One thing is for sure, a storm is brewing over the future of wind power in Europe. The latest controversy concerns the difficulty to recycle the turbine blades. There are a lot of wind farms here. They're within a kilometre of each other, all over the north of our department, which is called Ero. There are more than 300 wind turbines. It's gigantic. Residents in and around the town of Lunas, in southern France, want seven turbines of the Bernague wind farm dismantled. Their legal battle has taken years. The court case is still ongoing. We're not against wind power. We're opposed to putting turbines in areas which are rich in terms of biodiversity. In Occitania, this is the case for roughly 70% of the region. Marion represents a residence group known as Collective 3412. At the start of June, she called on locals to rally outside the Bernag wind farm. The Bernag wind turbines are a symbol, a symbol of all the turbines that should be destroyed or dismantled on all the mountain ridges in France. A huge number of wind turbines will soon be dismantled across Europe, but only a small number of those will go because of local opposition. The first generation of wind turbines are up for renewal and replacing. This process, called repowering, has started happening all over Europe in sites just like this in Ghent. Here two new turbines will replace two old ones. It will double output. We'll go from 2 to 4.2 megawatts per turbine. This means we'll triple the electricity produced. We'll surpass 9,000 kilowatts per hour. This will supply almost 5,800 families. Repowering means some 5,700 wind turbines per year could be decommissioned in Europe by 2030. Up to 90% of a wind turbine can now be recycled. The problem remains the blades. Made from composite materials intended to last, they were not designed to be recycled. Take a look at this wind blade. It's around 40 meters long, weighs 7 tons and represents 10% of the wind turbine that's difficult to recycle. It's that 10% that's controversial in terms of how sustainable this renewable energy is. So what happens to old blades? Most are reused. This one will have a second life in Ukraine. But it's forecast the number of decommissioned blades will be so high in five to ten years that the current management system will need to change. At this moment, about 80% of all the wind turbines we dismantle are being used as a wind turbine somewhere else. That's either Europe, Italy, UK, Sweden, Denmark. But the other 20% is being recycled. That's because it's not economically feasible to use them again. But in the very near future, we are talking about, I think, two years from now, about 80% will have to be recycled because there's less space for used turbines and bigger, newer turbines are much more competitive. Most blades that are not reused or incinerated end up in landfill. This image of a blade graveyard in the US has become symbolic of the darker side of this renewable energy. Only four countries in Europe, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands and Finland, have banned blades being sent to landfill. The leading voice of Europe's wind energy industry has called for a Europe-wide landfill ban by 2025. We do not want these blades to end up in landfill. The blades are admittedly non-toxic and technically they are landfill safe, but it is a waste of valuable resources and it is incompatible with the wind industry's commitment to full circularity that we should be putting blade waste in landfill. Right now, only a handful of facilities in Europe can recycle blades. The technology remains relatively new and drastically needs to be scaled up.
The Spanish startup Reciclalia takes blades from France, Portugal and North Africa. By the end of 2021, they say they will be able to recycle 1,500 blades a year. We're able to eliminate all the organic matter that is present in these composite materials so that in the end we obtain the glass fibre and more importantly the carbon fibre which is clean so it can be used again. We are working with pioneering companies in sectors as diverse as ceramics, construction and transport including the automotive and aeronautic sectors. Representatives from the wind energy industry believe the call for a EU-wide landfill ban will accelerate the scaling up of recycling technology that in turn will see demand for recycled materials rise. Danish wind power giant Vestas insists it's doing a lot to improve sustainability across the entire value chain from design to manufacture. The ultimate goal is to produce a 100% recyclable blade. Our blades are today roughly recyclable at a rate of 42%, 42-43%, so there's still a way to go. Um, uh, But if you're asking when we will reach 100%, um, I think that will still take a while. The industry is striving to improve production, efficiency and circularity. But should we be asking how much energy do we really need and how should it be produced? Broader questions that this Paris-based lab is attempting to answer. These fish could hold the key. We always imagine energy should be produced at maximum output at the best possible efficiency, or inversely, as powerfully as possible. In fact, this is not what nature does. For example, when we move, it's natural to minimise the production of waste. An animal, when it moves, wants to be the least tired as possible at the end of the day. So the key characteristic of an energy production system should be geared towards lowering consumption by trying to manage consumption differently. In other words, we should try to manage the way we function as a society differently. Perhaps this example from the natural world is the best guide to finding the right balance between protecting the environment and meeting our energy needs. (music) Thank <music> you.